Hi, this is Andy, KA4GKP, and welcome to the Ham Whisperers Technician Class License Exam course. This course is designed to help you study and pass your the Element 2 Technician Class License Examination in order to get your Technician Class Amateur Radio License. The Technician Class Operator Element 2 Examination is made up of 35 questions from a roughly 396 question pool. In order to pass the exam, you have to answer 26 of those 35 questions correctly. The pool questions for this course will take effect on July 1st, 2014 and are going to be valid until June 30th, 2018. Alright, so you have this big question pool filled with a bunch of questions about amateur radio. The way the exam is made up is that there are 10 sub-elements to the question pool and of those, in those 10 sub-elements there's 35 sections. The general rule of thumb is that when an exam is made up there's a question that is pulled from each section. Now, if you want to game the system a little bit and memorize how these questions are categorized, most of the questions when they're presented do have the little FCC label that refers back to the question pool, which generally gives you an idea what the subject matter that question will be about. Right now, I wouldn't be too worried about that. Now, what we're going to be doing in this first section is primarily dealing with definitions. So you don't really have to worry about a lot of theory and stuff, but when we get to the theory, uh, I'll go over in a lot of detail and you shouldn't have anything to worry about. Alright, so this slide's a bit of an eye chart, but what it does for you is it shows you which sub-elements and their general categories are weighted more heavily in the exam than others. For instance, sub-element T1 has six exam questions where sub-element T4 only has two. So if you're weak in one area and it's got a lot of questions, th this chart shows you where you can focus your attention. Alright, for the first question, which of the following is the purpose of the amateur radio service as stated in the FCC rules and regulations? The answer is advancing skills in the technical and communication phases of the radio art. Now, this answer stands apart from the rest and that it refers to amateur radio essentially as an art form, which is pretty neat. However, one of the purposes of amateur radio is to create a community of technical and communication experts within the civilian population. So, the answer is advancing skills in the technical and communication phases of the radio art. Now this next question is an easy one. What agency regulates and enforces the rules for the amateur radio service in the United States? Well, you're getting an FCC license, so I would imagine it would be the FCC. Don't overthink the question, just answer it with the obvious. All right, the next question is, which part of the FCC rules contains the rules and regulations governing the amateur radio service? This is one of those questions that you're just going to have to suck up and memorize. It's part 97. Part 97 of the rules and regulations for the FCC designates what's allowed and what's not allowed for amateur radio use. One of those questions you just have to memorize. All right, so what meets the FCC definition of harmful interference? You have a guy sitting back, happy ham, who is following the rules and regulations and all of a sudden somebody transmits a signal that just blasts straight across his and seriously degrades, obstructs, or repeatedly interrupts his legal broadcast. So you're looking for a lot of negative words here. Degrades, obstructs, interrupts. That'll find you your answer. Which of the following is a purpose of the amateur radio service rules and regulations as defined by the FCC? The answer is enhancing international goodwill. Now there's many rule, reasons for the rules and regulations. However, one of the big ones is to foster a community of positive communication among amateur radio operators. Now this is does not only apply to domestic but also international amateur radio operators. So one of the reasons for the rules and regulations is to enhance international goodwill. Which of the following services are protected from interference by amateur signals under all circumstances? The answer is radio navigation service and this makes perfect sense because airplanes, ships, and trains rely on radio navigation service to get from point A to point B. So interference with that service can cause a very 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 big problem. So the which of the following services were protected from interference by amateur signals under all circumstances? The answer is radio navigation service. What is the FCC Part 97 definition of telemetry? Well, to differentiate this from telecommand is telemetry is a one-way transmission of measurement from a distance vice a command and control function. Just remember, metry sounds like meter, which is a unit of measurement. Which entity recommends transmit and receive channels and other parameters for auxiliary and repeater stations? The answer is a frequency coordinator. Now it's important to point out that this guy is not a member of the FCC. He is, or she, a person who has been appointed by other people who have auxiliary or repeater stations. The trick with this question, to get it right, remember coordinator, not a manager. 
All right, so here's that definition again. Who selects a frequency coordinator? Well, a frequency coordinator is recognized in a local or regional area by amateur operators whose stations are eligible to be auxiliary or repeater stations. So essentially, it's a ham who is appointed by other hams who are eligible to be auxiliary or repeater stations. So they're handpicked, and it's democracy at its best. All right, this is a good one. What is the FCC Part 97 definition of an amateur station? Well, according to the definition of the Part 97, it's a station in an amateur radio service consisting of the apparatus necessary for carrying on radio communications. Now, compared to the rest of the answers, this one fits the question the best. What you're looking for are the words amateur and station, and that'll help you get the question correct. When is willful interference to other amateur radio stations permitted? The answer is at no time. That means never. And Willful interference means purposely going out of your way to cause interference to another amateur station or any station in general. It is never allowed. So when is willful interference to other amateur radio stations permitted? Never, at no time. Which of the following is a permissible use of the amateur radio service? The answer is allowing a person to conduct radio experiments and to communicate with other licensed hams around the world. Now you're allowed to do two big things in amateur radio. One is to experiment with radio technology and the other is to communicate. So experiment and communicate. What you're not allowed to do is make money, and that's how this answer distinguishes itself from the rest. Is the rest of the answers have some sort of commercial gain associated with them. So in amateur radio service, it is permissible to allow a person to conduct radio experiments and to communicate. What is the FCC Part 97 definition of a telecommand? For this, to find the answer to this one, what you want to remember is telecommand has the word command in it, and it's at a distance. So it's essentially something that can control a device from a distance. It's all about the control. Remember that, and you'll get that answer right. What must you do if you are operating on the 23 centimeter band and learn that you are interfering with a radio location station outside the United States? The answer is to stop operating or take steps to eliminate that harmful interference. Now, in general, this is the right thing to do whenever you realize that you're interfering with another station, is to basically stop operating, check your equipment, and try to stop the interference with the other station. So whether that station is in the United States or outside the United States, stop operating and take steps to eliminate the interference. All right, now it's time for the T1A test or quiz on the questions we just went over. Take out a piece of paper, number 1 through 14. I'll be going through the questions fairly quick, so if you need more time, simply just pause the video. When we're done with the quiz, you can go to hamwhisper.com, go to the exam answers tab, which is at the top of the page, find the T1A section, and the answer to the exam will be there. So without further ado, grab your pens and paper, and good luck. Question 1. Which of the following is a purpose of the amateur radio service as stated in the FCC rules and regulations? A. Providing personal radio communications for as many citizens as possible. B. Providing communications for international nonprofit organizations. C. Advancing skills in the technical and communication phases of the radio art. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 2. What agency regulates and enforces the rules for the amateur radio service in the United States? A. FEMA. B. The ITU. C. The FCC. Or D. Homeland Security. Question 3. Which part of the FCC rules contain the rules and regulations governing the amateur radio service? A. Part 73. B. Part 95. C. Part 90. Or D. Part 97. Question 4. Which of the following meets the FCC definition of harmful interference? A. Radio transmissions that annoy users of a repeater. B. Unwanted radio transmissions that cause costly harm to radio station apparatus. C. That which seriously degrades, obstructs, or repeatedly interrupts a radio communication service operating in accordance with the radio regulations. Or D. Static from lightning storms. Question 5. Which of the following is a purpose of the amateur radio service rules and regulations as defined by the FCC? A. Enhancing international goodwill. B. Providing inexpensive communication for local emergency organizations. C. Training of operators in military radio operating procedures. Or D. All of these choices are correct. Question 6. Which of the following services are protected from interference by amateur signals under all circumstances? A. Citizens radio service. B. Broadcast service. C. Land mobile radio service. 
or D, radio navigation service. Question 7. What is the FCC Part 97 definition of telemetry? A, an information bulletin issued by the FCC. B, a one-way transmission to initiate, modify, or terminate functions of a device at a distance. C, a one-way transmission of measurement at a distance from the measuring instrument. Or D, an information bulletin from a VEC. Question 8. Which of the following entities recommends transmit receive channels and other parameters for auxiliary and repeater stations? A. Frequency Spectrum Manager, B. Frequency Coordinator, C. FCC Regional Field Office, or D. International Telecommunications Union. Question 9. Who selects a frequency coordinator? A. The FCC Office of Spectrum Management and Coordination Policy, B. The local chapter of the Office of National Council of Independent Frequency Coordinators, C. Amateur operators in a local or regional area whose stations are eligible to be auxiliary or repeater stations, or D, FCC Regional Field Office. Question 10. What is the FCC Part 97 definition of an amateur station? A, a station in an amateur radio service consisting of the apparatus necessary for carrying on radio communications. B, a building where amateur radio receivers, transmitters, and RF power amplifiers are installed. C, any radio station operated by a non-professional, or D, any radio station for hobby use. Question 11. When is willful interference to other amateur radio stations permitted? A. Only if the station being interfered with is expressing extreme religious or political views. B. At no time. C. Only during a contest. Or D. At any time, amateurs are not protected from willful interference. Question 12. Which of the following is a permissible use of the amateur radio service? A. Broadcasting music and videos to friends. B. Providing a way for amateur radio operators to earn additional income by using their stations to pass messages. C. Providing low-cost communications for startup businesses. Or D. Allowing a person to conduct radio experiments and to communicate with other licensed hams around the world. Question 13. What is the FCC Part 97 definition of telecommand? A. An instruction bulletin issued by the FCC. B. A one-way radio transmission of measurement at a distance from the measuring instrument. C. A one-way transmission to initiate, modify, or terminate functions of a device at a distance. Or D. An instruction from a VEC. Question 14. What must you do if you are operating on the 23 centimeter band and learn that you are interfering with a radio location station outside the United States? A. Stop operating or take steps to eliminate the harmful interference. B. Nothing, because this band is allocated exclusively to the amateur service. C. Establish contact with the radio location station and ask them to change frequency. Or D. Change the CW mode, because this would not likely cause interference. And that's it. Now that you're done with the quiz, you can go to hamwhisperer.com to check your answers. You'll find them under the Exam Answers tab at the top of the page. Just click on that and find Lesson 1, T1A, and you'll find your answers. Well, until next time in Lesson 2, this is Andy, KE4GKP, and I hope to hear you on the air soon.